Hi, I'm Professor Jay Zagorski. Today, lots of people are worried about robots and computers taking over all of our jobs. Is this fear of mass automation justified? One way to know is to track labor force participation rates, which we'll talk about in this video. I've been thinking about mechanization and its effect on workers for years. Before becoming a professor, I used to work in a computer company that helped automate the printing and publishing of newspapers. Newspapers were the way many people got their information before the internet. My company's sales force delivered a very simple message to newspaper companies. Buy our computers and you can cut costs by eliminating many jobs without lowering the newspaper's quality. I liked when newspapers bought our systems because it meant I got to keep my job. However, each system we sold meant somebody else was losing their job. The history of newspaper printing and publishing went through three big stages. First, letters called type were taken out of large cases like this one and set by hand into sentences. Creating a full newspaper took a long time using this method, so newspapers were relatively short. Then, at the end of the 1800s, a new machine called the linotype was invented. Operators sat in front of a giant keyboard and typed in an entire line of text. When they were finished typing, the machine cast all the letters into one long piece of metal like this one. This dramatically sped up the process of publishing a newspaper, and it allowed for more pages. However, it meant fewer workers were needed to set the type in each newspaper. Roughly 100 years later, computers started replacing the linotype machines by doing the same process in software. This was much faster than working with hot metal. However, even fewer workers were needed to create the actual newspaper once the switch to computers was made. There are three key ideas in this history lesson. First, when technology changes, many workers are pushed out of their old jobs. Some of these workers retrain for new positions, but others, typically older workers, just drop out of the labor force. Second, while old jobs are lost, the advance in technology creates new jobs that no one's ever seen before. Third, new technologies often make things cheaper and faster. This increases demand and boosts employment in the new jobs. Unfortunately, it's impossible to predict if future technological change will create or destroy more jobs. However, we can understand technology's impact on the economy by tracking labor force participation rates. The formula behind the labor force participation rate is quite simple. Add the number of employed and unemployed people together and divide this number by the adult population. You can think of this rate as a simple indicator of worker utilization. It's just like a speedometer. At close to 0%, none of the population is working and the economy is moving very slowly, or not at all. Close to 100% means almost the entire population is working and the economy is moving at top speed. A low rate means the country has lots of spare capacity and can increase how much it produces by bringing in new workers. Conversely, a high rate means the country has little labor market slack and cannot grow without opening the doors to new immigrants or boosting the birth rate. To understand one country's long-term trends, let's first look at the graph of labor force participation rates in the United States since the end of World War II. At the end of the 1940s, about 58% of all adults were working or looking for work. This number climbed almost to 68% by the turn of the century. The first half of the graph shows more and more people joining the U.S. labor force. Despite U.S. industry becoming more automated, a higher percentage of Americans were working, which boosted production and made the U.S. richer. However, since the year 2000, the trend's been the exact opposite. More people are dropping out of the labor force each year. This means over time, a smaller fraction of adults are either working or looking for work. But is this recent fall due to automation or another factor? One way to get a clearer view is to separate male and female participation. This next graph shows changes in women's participation are driving the overall rise and fall. In the late 1940s, just 30% of all adult women were in the labor force. As discrimination, family size, and the gap in wages between men and women all shrank, the number of women working doubled to about 60%. In fact, in the 1980s, it looked like women would soon outnumber men in the workforce. Then the rising women's trend stopped, sometime around the year 2000, and began to fall. This drop is likely due to the retirement of the baby boomer generation that began at the same time. The trend for men in the graph is the exact opposite. Almost 90% of adult men in the late 1940s were either working or looking for work. 
but their steady withdrawal has reduced that number to about 70%. That's a dramatic drop, and it's partly due to more generous government retirement and disability payments, allowing more men to leave the labor force. Together, this graph means over time, men and women are changing roles. A few generations ago, only men went to work and women stayed home. Today, the graph shows a much more equal pattern. In conclusion, labor force participation rates show if a large or small percentage of the population is either working or trying to work. These rates are very useful for trying to understand how changes in technology, aging employees, and other factors like immigration impact the workforce. Up until the 21st century, more people were in the labor force despite increased automation. But will automation and robots continue to make more jobs or begin stealing our jobs in the future? Hmm. Use the tools I've taught you in the video to follow labor force participation rates, which will help reveal the answer. Be sure to check out my next video, where we'll look at actual unemployment data. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.